and kind of talk us through whatever it is you're doing so we understand. Okay. So um, I'm, Isla is the demo dog for service dog work, and so she has to be trained to perform um, obedience skills and manners in public the same way a service dog would be required, and she also has to be trained to do the various tasks that a service dog will accomplish for their veterans. Um, so uh, when we walk, a dog is required to heel or walk at our side within one foot of us and not get in our way. So when I move around, and then she want, I, they, they're required to follow our hands so we can move them from one side of our body to the other. Um, and I'll demonstrate that. I love heel. Without any tension on the leash, by the way. They're required to back up so that we can back up. Back up. So this is a really good example of how we get a dog to back up straight. She just screwed up. across our body, then the dog begins to wrap and impede our emotion, and they become a tripping hazard. So we feed them their rewards where they're supposed to be instead of over here. If I gave her a treat over here, she follows my hand, and then she would get in the way while I'm walking. I love you. Girl. We have to teach them to back up and get out of our way if we turn into them. restaurant or a doctor's waiting room, you'd have to back your dog up into a little cubby spot and so that they're not in everybody's way and everyone would be tripping over the dog. And they have to stay there and wait for you for as long as you're there. So this is called the downstay exercise and it's extremely important. Service dogs spend a lot of time in downstay. <laughs> um, they, we also use them for what we call uh, spatial um, personal space assistance. So, stay. Good girl, she's very curious about your family. Don't blame her, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so at checkout lines, um, I now know, I didn't know before, are a nightmare for someone with PTSD. Um, because there's, they, they trap you, and everyone crowds you in this society. By the way, the, a side effect of COVID <laughs> And the pandemic is a wonderful thing for veterans who have PTSD because it makes everybody keep their distance. Before COVID, our society had a tendency to crowd in lines. And like sometimes you can actually feel someone's breath on the back of your neck when you're standing in line. So what we teach the dogs to do is, I'll stand up, girl. Let's say I am in a store and I'm looking at something and I want to read the ingredients. I would feel, good girl. I'm reading the ingredients on a label, but a, a veteran who's hypervigilant can't read the ingredients on the label because he's so worried or she is so worried about what's going on behind them and who's coming and whatnot. So we take the dog, stay, and put them on a standstay there 
So now the dog is watching my back for me while I look at the ingredients and pay attention to what I need to do. And I don't have to worry so much about what's going on behind me because the dog is trained to do this stand today. Stay. Stay right there. Very good. So this is a dog watching your back for a hypervigilant person. And also in a checkout line, let's say this right here was a checkout line. We would enter the checkout line. I don't need switch back. Switch back. Good girl. So now, here's the checkout line. And I'm walking through it, and the dog is watching my back the whole way. I look for her. So we practice. I set up this room so there's narrow little spaces for veterans to practice checkout line behavior. But while they're in the checkout line, they can also have the dog stay, be considerably behind them, which prevents the person from behind that's behind them from crowding them in the line. Getting into a line where there's no escape and it gets super crowded is a definite PTSD trigger. So, and then when we leave, I like you. The dog comes back around and walks out of the store at our side. Is that good enough? 